Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Bench's Book Reviews. What's in the box today? Now I should mention, well, let's see what's in the box first. It's, ooh, it is Skimble Shanks by T.S. Eliot and Arthur Robbins. Uh, subtitled The Railway Cat. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, there was an episode missing last week, but don't worry, we're back this week with Skimble Shanks, The Railway Cat. Uh, T.S. Eliot, famous author, poet, I believe, American born. Um, so it's written by T.S. Eliot and illustrated by Arthur Robbins. That's probably this cat. Yeah, and that's a train. Here, this is a poem, I think, so it may have some sort of rhythm. Let's see. There's a whisper down the line at 11.39, when the night mail's ready to depart. Probably the name of the train. Mail, like post, post train. Saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? Has he gone to hunt the thimble? Good rhyme there. We must find him, or the train can't stop. There are the people looking for their cat. It's a fun thing, it's like one of these where's Wally type things, you could probably look for the cat in that picture if you wanted to. Um, I'm not sure. There's a bit of a sketchy looking cat there with a top hat. I believe that actually is... There's a series here, look, there's on the back, there's Macavity and Mr. M Mistopheles, a Greek cat. So that might be one of those, although not quite sure. The train seems to be driven by a dog, so this is a universe where cats and dogs live in harmony. But they can't find Skimble. All the guards and all the porters and the station master's daughters, they're searching high and low, saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? For unless he's very nimble, then the nightmare just can't go. Oh, this dog with his watch, you see, he's annoyed. Um, and he's got a watch as well, you see, that's emphasising the, the tardiness. Here's him with a timetable. Um, no, they're quite perplexed by this cat. Daughters and porters is a nice rhyme, because it's very much not an I rhyme, which is always nice. And they rhyme skimble with thimble and nimble. I don't know if there's an interesting rhyme for skimble on every page. Let's see. It's 11.42, so that's three minutes later. Then the signal's nearly due, and the passengers are frantic to a man. Then Skimble will appear and he'll saunter to the rear. He's been busy in the luggage van, there he is. So he was just busy in the luggage van, not sure what he was doing. Not sure what a yellow flag means um, in this context. Ah, there's McCavity, the masked cat. Oh, that was McCavity, yep. He's on the train too, and a few dogs. And now people are happy because Skimble appeared. He gives one flash of his glass green eyes. Uh, on the front cover, they're kind of bluey grey. Uh, so there you go. And the signal goes all clear. And we're off at last. Well, on time. So, I mean, they were only looking for him for three minutes. For the northern part of the northern hemisphere. And they're following a sign pointing to the north, although um, there aren't any points there anyway. So it's a bit pointless. Pointless, quite literally, having a signpost uh, there. But yeah, the northern part of the Northern Hemisphere. So, let's see. Maybe they're off to the Arctic Circle. You may say that, by and large, it's Skimble who's in charge of the sleeping car express. From the driver and the guard... I guess, that, is that the same as the night mail? Or there's a, there's a sleeping car on the mail train. I guess they kill two birds with one stone. From the driver and the guards to the bagman playing cards, he will supervise them all, more or less. And they are playing cards. That's quite nice. And he's supervising. Oh, he's got green eyes here. So it's just the front cover. There you go. Front covers are often a bit different. Uh, they get treated separately. Sometimes even by a, someone just mocks them up based on the 
interior illustrations. Here's McCavity again, that's nice. If you dread McCavity, you might quite like seeing him here. Nice crossover. And that could even be Mr. What was his name? Mistopheles there. Looks like his front cover. Although if their front covers are inconsistent, this could be misleading. Um, so in his skimble, he's just walking around there and then it says, down the corridor he paces and examines all the faces of the travellers in the first and in the third carriages. He establishes control by a regular patrol and he'd know at once if anything occurred. And here are some shady looking rats who've got a piece of paper that says mail carriage. It's almost as though they're plotting something. Um, and Skimble is winking at them. He will watch you without winking. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, he is very clearly winking. He's got one eye closed. And then the very next line is, he will watch you without winking. And he sees what you are thinking, and it's certain that he doesn't approve of hilarity and riot, so the folk are very quiet when Skimble is about and on the move. I quite like it was, um in this sort of poem when sometimes one line that kind of runs into the next with an olive on the next line. I don't know if this is meant to be having like a, a railway type of rhythm. Like the chug 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 of a railway train. I don't know. You can play no pranks with Skimble Shanks. It's his full name. It rhymes with pranks. He's a cat that cannot be ignored. Oh, he's taking their ball off them, look. So here they're being hilarious and riotous, kicking balls around. And then he's confiscated their ball. He's walking off smirking, and they're looking a bit upset. They want their ball back. So nothing goes wrong on the Northern Mail when Skimbleshanks is aboard. Uh, oh, it's very pleasant. That's kind of the end of a verse, I guess. Oh, it's very pleasant when you have found your little den with your name written up on the door. Here's a human, so it's not all animals. And the berth is very neat with a newly folded sheet. And there's not a speck of dust on the floor. There is every sort of light. You can make it dark or bright. Uh, she's got a dimmer switch. That's cool. So she's making it dark or bright. There's a button that you can turn to make a breeze. That's on a dial as well. So you can make the breeze. Um, well, don't know how far. Up and down the Beaufort scale it goes, but you can um, certainly make it slightly stronger and slightly weaker. Like in a car. There's a funny little basin you're supposed to wash your face in. That's a nice rhyme. And a crank to shut the window if you sneeze. I don't know if crank is going to rhyme with skimble shank. She's sneezing because she's been washing her face and turning the breeze dial up too high. I expect she's going to catch a cold. Uh, then the guard's looking politely and will ask you very brightly, do you like your morning tea, weak or strong? But Skimble's just behind him and was ready to remind him that Skimble wouldn't let anything go wrong. The implication here is that Skimble's already asked what kind of strength tea the guests want, the passengers, and the guard is just bothering her unnecessarily. Unnecessarily, because he didn't um, remember. So something went a bit wrong there, I guess. The passenger got disturbed without cause. And when you creep into your cosy berth and pull up the counterpane... I'm not quite sure what a counterpane is. It's probably a window. Or the thing, something closes. You're bound to admit that it's very... Oh no, I think a counterpane actually is the... I think I looked this up once. It's the thing on the bed. It's like the bed cover. I always thought it was a window, because I know what panes of glass. But I think actually that is the... This sort of old-fashioned extra bed cover there. Um, you're bound to admit that it's very nice. To know that you won't be bothered by mice. Kinds. You can leave all that to the railway cat. The cat of the railway train. And there is. And now, surprisingly, this cover illustration is also an interior illustration with the wrong coloured eyes. So, what's all that about? Unless he's under some sort of filtered light where green looks like blue. In the middle of the night, he is always fresh and bright every now and then. He has a cup of tea. 
doesn't say what strength. With perhaps a drop of scotch while he's keeping on the watch. Oh dear. Only well, stopping here and there to catch a flea. There was a mice, actually. Thought he was going to be catching them. And he's just letting them run wild and concentrating on fleas. You were fast asleep at crew. This is just you in general. You, one of the passengers. And we're kind of standing in for just passengers in general. And so we never knew that he was walking up and down the station. Having a little break there. The crew is in the north of England. Uh, so they're not um, probably off to quite the Arctic Circle. You were sleeping all the while he was busy at Carlisle, that's further north than crew, where he greets the station master with elation. The station master looks pretty cool. With his beard and stuff. Um, but you saw him at Dumfries. Oh, they've made it to Scotland, so they are going further and further north. Well, he summons the police if there's anything they ought to know about. Here, my cavity is uh, stowing away in this uh, mail. I guess that's the post they're uh, delivering to Scotland. And they're also, but the police haven't gone after him. The police have gone after these rats. Oh, I guess we're plotting some sort of heist. Um, but perhaps McCavity is the one they should be after. I mean, he's wearing that mask. So he's certainly pretending to be a bandit, even if he isn't. Um, so the Scottish police have caught those rats. Anyway. When you get to Gallowgate, which I believe is a part of Glasgow or something. It's, I'm just, I think it's like a borough of Glasgow. I think it's called boroughs. That you do not have to wait for Skimbleshanks will help you to get out. He's helping that lady who was sneezing earlier. Um, and then Mr. Mistopheles, I got that wrong again. Mistopheles is still there, so he's going even further north. Maybe off to Inverness, Aberdeen, or oh, knowledge of Scotland. It's not that great, but I'm um, pretty sure those are both north of Glasgow. Um, where are we? He's helped her to get out, and then he gives you a wave of his long brown tail. Well, orange. There's no way that's brown. I know some people say brown is just dark orange, but... Um, anyway, which says, I'll see you again. You'll meet without fail on the midnight mail. The cat of the railway train. Train and again don't really rhyme. Um... Which is a bit of a shame, because we had the nice porter's daughter, so he wasn't really doing our lines. No, he lets himself down on that very last uh, line there. Other than that, great poem, nice illustrations, don't quite match the text in all places, but there's lots of... I like the... Um, it adds a lot, having the pictures, because you get more of the story with these rats, and like the illustrators clearly thought who could be hilarious, who could be quiet, how could, what kind of button could she have to make things... Uh, Dim, why might she be sneezing? Um, because she's been over breathing. So, yes, I quite enjoyed that in spite of the handful of inconsistencies. I don't have these others in the series, but I may be able to get my hands on them. So, do let me know in the comments if you'd like more Elliot Robbins or Railway or Cat based books, any of those, and I can see what I can do. So, enjoy Skimble Shanks, and I'll see you next time another of Mr. Minch's book reviews. Bye!